Hi guys, Marcus here and welcome to Chinese Entertainment Update, August 30th, 2022. I release episodes every Tuesday, Thursday and Sunday. This is episode 581 and the rundown with timestamps is in the description box below. Now because I use Chinese names quite a bit on my show, if you want the English spelling of them, you can turn on subtitles. I create them myself. In today's episode, Love Between Fairy and Devil airs its finale and passes 10,500 popularity points. Immortal Samsara has over 400,000 ratings on Douban. Only two other dramas have more this year. The Lotus Casebook dismisses one of its crew members after he beats up a paparazzo. And Wang Dong apologizes for his quote-unquote drastic behavior after his wife accuses him of domestic violence. But first, here's what's recently premiered, just the one drama for today and yesterday. The Disappearing Child is a modern drama starring Tong Da Wei and Wei Chen. They premiered yesterday, August 29th. Tong Da Wei plays a man who goes on a frantic search when his son mysteriously disappears in his apartment building. His search leads to a number of disturbing cases of missing children. The Disappearing Child is slated for 12 episodes and is available on YouTube with English subs. That's it for recently premiered dramas. Moving on, here are some dramas that are confirmed to premiere imminently. There's Lost Track of Time, a costume drama starring Fair Sing and Tsai Tse Lu. Yesterday, they announced on their official Weibo that they will premiere on August 31st. They also released a new trailer on the day. According to Douban, Fair Sing plays the affectionate Lu Anran who has to choose between two outstanding men. Tsai Tse Lu's character, the ninth prince of the Han Dynasty, and Jing Chao's character, one who's also of royal bloodline. The drama is slated for 30 episodes and will stream on Mango TV. Then there's Gentlemen of Eastern Eighth, a modern drama starring Zhang Han and Wang Xiaochen. Yesterday, they announced on their official Weibo that they will premiere on August 31st. The drama wrapped filming at the end of November 2020, so quite a while ago. For one reason or another, it could not get past the review board until now. Zhang Han, Du Chun, Jing Chao, and Huang Yuming play the titular Gentlemen of Eastern Eighth. The drama follows the four university buddies, who are now in their 40s, as they navigate through the ups and downs of their careers and love lives. It is slated for 40 episodes and will stream on Mango TV and Tencent. And lastly, for imminently premiering dramas, Side Story of Fox Volant. I spoke about this one in a previous episode. It is a costume drama starring Qin Junjie and Liang Jie. Last week, they announced that they will premiere on August 31st. According to Baidu, Qin Junjie plays Hu Fei, a young martial artist who seeks vengeance for his father's death. But when he finds the alleged perpetrator, played by Ling Yushen, he has second thoughts. During his journey, he meets a young maiden, played by Liang Jie, and a medicine guru apprentice, played by Fair Sing, both of whom show signs of affection towards him. Side story of Fox Volant is slated for 40 episodes and will premiere on Tencent. So three dramas set to premiere on August 31st. I will update on where to watch them with English subs, if available, after they premiere. And that's it for dramas with premiere dates. Moving on, Love Between Fairy and Devil has aired its finale. The hit Sinsia drama premiered on August 7th and aired the last of its 36 episodes on August 29th. Its female lead, Esther Yu, took to Weibo to say her goodbyes. In her message, she thanked the drama's actors and creative team. Quote, For all the tissues when I had tears, and for all the hugs when I was aggrieved, I will remember it forever. It's really sad to say goodbye to Xiao Lanhua, but don't be too sad because I am Xiao Lanhua. I'm always here. I love you all. End quote. Male lead Dylan Wang also shared a message. Quote, In this past month, I've been just like you all, watching the drama right on time. For me, as an actor, being a part of this drama was my honor. Meeting Dongfang Qingchang was my redemption. Dylan added that even though when they broke 10,000 popularity points, he said many thank yous, here he still wants to thank the producers, the casting crew, the audience, and so on. 
By the way, speaking of popularity points, the drama shared this poster yesterday to announce that they had broken 10,500. If I'm not mistaken, a lifelong journey held the record this year for 10,098 points, which would mean that Love Between Fairy and Devil has overtaken it to become the most popular drama on IGE this year so far. From one popular Xianxia drama, we move to another, Immortal Samsara. Recently, the hashtag Immortal Samsara surpasses 400,000 ratings trended on Weibo. Last episode, I updated that Immortal Samsara was one of five dramas to break 10,000 popularity points on Yuku this year. As of today, it has an average 5.9 rating out of over 445,000 ratings on Douban. So far this year, only two other dramas have more ratings. They are A Dream of Splendor with over 756,000 and Reset with almost 772,000. For female lead Yang Zi, she now has three dramas that have over 400,000 ratings on Douban. The other two are Ashes of Love and Go Go Squid. Immortal Samsara continues to stream new episodes on Yuku. They will stream the last of their 59 episodes on September 7th. The drama is available on YouTube with English subs. And lastly for this segment, a physical altercation broke out on the set of the Lotus Casebook. In June, I updated that a set manager on the Lotus Casebook got into a little dust-up with a paparazzo. At the time, lead actor Cheng Yi tried to stop them before he was pulled away by his assistant. Just recently, something similar but more serious in my estimation took place. As this Sena Entertainment article reported a couple of days ago, a crew member from the drama beat up a paparazzo and threatened to throw him over a wall. Cheng Yi was not there to calm things down this time, and just as well as the crew member looked beyond persuasion. Indeed, he was quite aggressive. In a video that's been circulating social media, the crew member is seen punching the physically smaller paparazzo several times in the face and head. Even as the paparazzo walks away and implores others to call the cops, the crew member chases him down to deliver more blows. At one point, the crew member threatens to throw him over the wall. As a result, the crew member, who as it turns out was an assistant to an assistant director, got dismissed. The Lotus Casebook released a statement on their official Weibo to announce that much and to apologize. They explained that the assistant to the assistant director, one Mr. Ju, had repeatedly asked the paparazzo to not take pictures, but the paparazzo insisted on doing so. Mr. Ju did not control his emotions and beat him up. Other crew members immediately sent the injured paparazzo to the hospital. Production immediately dismissed Mr. Chu. Being fresh out of a job might not be the biggest of Mr. Chu's worries. If you've seen the video, it's hard to imagine how he escapes assault charges, unless they settle out of court. The Lotus Casebook started filming in June and is just now starting to wrap some of its cast members. These paparazzo dust-ups have already gotten it so much publicity. Wanted or not is another story. According to Baidu, in the Lotus Casebook, Cheng Yi plays the titular Li Lianhua, a famous traveling doctor who roams the countryside. He joins Joseph Cheng's character, a passionate young master who dreams of fighting for justice and peace. And Ero Xiao's character, a man described as having no interest in the pugilistic world, as the trio solve cases and forge a deep friendship. Alright, moving on now, celebrity updates, and I have just the one story involving an actor who we're probably gonna see very little of now moving forward. 44-year-old Wang Dong is a Chinese actor. He's been in many Chinese dramas over the years, mostly in supporting roles. This year, he was in the Blue Whisper series as the head immortal master. Wang Dong is married to Annapol, and together they have a 10-month-old daughter. On August 26th, Annapol shared a video on her Weibo to accuse Wang Dong of domestic violence. In the two-minute-plus video, Wang Dong is seen to be in a fit of rage. He curses at Annapol and utters threats. At one point, he strangles her and screams into her face, asking if she wants to die together. At another point, she explains with captions that she called the cops, and eventually, a figure that looks like a cop does appear. Those of you who have seen the video would know that I spared quite a bit of detail. That's because the video is quite disturbing. If you want to check it out for yourself, it is on YouTube. 
In the video, Anna Paul also showed some pictures of injuries she claims she suffered at the hands of Wang Dong. Wang Dong responded to this. He shared a message on Weibo, firstly to apologize for his quote-unquote drastic behavior at the time. Then he said, I'm finally free from being tortured and threatened again. I used to have expectations for life. I worked hard and tolerated. To be controlled without respite is not a normal husband and wife relationship. But I really want to say that this is not the whole picture and the truth. We have entrusted a lawyer to the matter. Please give us some privacy. Sorry for disturbing everyone. By the way, folks, remember the Tangshan incident a couple of months ago? The one where a group of men brutally beat up a few women at a barbecue restaurant in Tangshan City? Well, there's an update on that. According to ABC, Chinese authorities said Monday that 28 people have been charged and 15 officials, including police, are being investigated for corruption. The investigation has gone beyond the actual attack to encompass broader allegations of criminal activity and police corruption in the area. Won't get into too much detail, but suffice to say that because of the heinousness of the men's actions and the exposure the story got, that area is getting a real cleanup. On that note, it's Tuesday today, so time for another segment of Where's Mark Is At? The title of the segment doesn't refer to where I'm at physically, it refers to where I'm at in the dramas I'm following. I'm currently following Zero Dramas, as I just finished Love Like the Galaxy earlier today. And without giving away any spoilers, here are my final thoughts on it. Love Like the Galaxy premiered on July 5th, and aired the last of its 56 episodes on August 18th. It stars Leo Wu and Zhao Lu Si, and is available on YouTube and Wii TV. So I have spoken about how I feel about this drama in previous episodes. In a nutshell, I enjoyed it. And let me just quickly go over some of the reasons why. Number one is its female lead, Zhao Lu Si. Her character, Cheng Shaoshang, starts off as naive and cheeky and transitions to a more proper and hardened lady. I think Zhao Lu Si played her to a T, especially with the comedic scenes. Leo Wu as a young and ruthless general was great too. He was very convincing in the scenes where he had to be a cold leader and where he had to fight. I also felt he and Zhao Lu Si had some really humorous and romantic scenes together. I also want to commend the cinematography. I was impressed with, among other things, some of the wanners, those long one-take shots that take a bit of time and coordination to get right. Overall, I like the drama for the performances, the cinematography, the comedy, and the main plot. I felt the drama had a good ending as well. All that said, however, I felt the drama could have been shorter. Not just in terms of fewer subplots, but also in the individual scenes themselves, I felt some of them had too much dialogue that rambled on. However, that was not a deal breaker for me, and the drama gets a recommendation from me. It is one of the top 10 dramas I've seen so far this year. As of today, Love Like the Galaxy has an average 7.6 rating from over 412,000 ratings on Douban. If I had to rate it, would give it something slightly lower, 7.3 for me. So it's time for me to pick up a new drama. I have a few titles in mind already and will choose one soon enough. For now, that's been another segment of Where Smart Is At. It also brings us to the end of this episode. This show wouldn't be possible without you guys tuning in, so I thank you all for your support. If you enjoyed it, do subscribe, and don't forget to click that notification button for more updates. If you'd like to contribute, consider giving this video a super thanks. It is the heart-shaped button with the dollar sign below this video. All funds support the show and keep it going. Or you can check out my Patreon page, where for a dollar or more a month, you'll have access to perks like recaps, requests, and have your questions answered. So stay safe, and as always, I wish you clear blue skies, good health, and happiness. Until next time, cheers.